And with that, I will take your questions. John. Uh, Sarah, the news came down in the last hour that the Deputy Director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, is stepping down. Can we get reaction from the White House? And is the President back at the end of December uh, was tweeting ab about Andrew McCabe uh, in a less than e effusive praise manner? Uh, what's he thinking about him stepping down? Uh, look, we've uh, seen the numerous ports, as all of you have, and any specifics, I can tell you none of this decision was made by that of the White House, and any specifics I would refer you to the FBI, who I believe will be making a statement later so today. You say that the White House was not involved in the decision, but clearly the President seemed to be involved in a public relations campaign against McCain. Oh, look, I, the President stands by his previous comments, but in terms of the uh, situation today, as I just said, we've seen the reports just as all of you have. We don't have any specific comments, and I would refer you to the FBI for any specifics uh, on the things that are taking place today. Jill? Sir, so when you say that you've seen the reports, does that mean that the President was not informed by anyone at the FBI that this was happening? Has he had any conversation with any, anything there? Uh, no, he hasn't. Cecilia. Sir, can you say definitively then that the president did not play a role in Andrew McCabe stepping down? Yes, I didn't say the president wasn't part of this decision-making process, and we would refer you to the FBI, where Christopher Wray serves as the director, which, as I said last week, and I'll repeat again today, the president has full confidence in him and has put uh, the decisions at the FBI in his hands. And did the president at any time convey that he wanted to fire Robert Mueller to anyone on the staff here? Uh, not that I'm aware of, actually. Thank you. So, and, and just to kind of finish this loop, so no one at the White House contacted the FBI about McCabe. No one uh, has put any directives or even had any discussions about his his tenure at the at the FBI. Did anyone at the White House? Not that I'm aware of. It. Nothing specific to uh, McCabe and his stepping down as of today. If that is what is being reported, Jim. Uh, sir, what would you say to uh, critics? who believe that uh, this White House and this President uh, have had almost sort of a steady uh, uh, pressure uh, put on the Justice Department, put on the FBI, uh, since the President came into office on this uh, special counsel investigation, uh, whether it be conversations with uh, Jeff Sessions' office about his <coughs> refusal, whether it be about uh, this desire for Robert Mueller to go away, uh, and now with Andrew McCabe. Uh, there were even reports that Rob Rosenstein was also feeling pressure from the White House. It sounds like there are multiple officials at multiple levels who are being pressured by the White House, by the President. What would you What would you say in response to I'd that? I say what I've concern? said. I would say what I've said probably a hundred times before, uh, and continue. Uh, will say I'm sure a hundred times today that the White House has been fully cooperative and is going to continue to be fully cooperative. In fact, we've gone above and beyond many times and certainly uh, done everything that we could. The White House has provided over 20 witnesses and tens of thousands of pages of documents to the special counsel. We have done everything we can to be fully transparent, and we're going to continue to do that throughout the process. But what about this? This notion that the president has been applying pressure for months, steady pressure. The only thing that the president has applied pressure to is to make sure we get this resolved so that you guys and everyone else can focus on the things that Americans actually care about, and that is uh, making sure everybody gets the Russia fever out of their system once and for all, that you are all reminded once again there was no collusion, and that we can move forward to fo focus on things like national security, the economy, and solving the immigration crisis that we have here in our country. No, no obstruction of justice, no, nothing improper, nothing inappropriate here at all whatsoever from the president since he came into office when it comes to this investigation. No, and I think we've been pretty clear on that. Stephen? So I have a question about the Nunes memo, but first I want to ask you if the president continues to have confidence in the man he appointed to be Deputy Attorney General, Rob Rosenstein. As I've said, uh, when you guys ask this question about number of individuals, when the president no longer has confidence in someone, you'll know. On the As memo, yes. yet another question. I do have another question about the memo. Uh, the House Intelligence Committee could vote as early as today to release this memo that Chairman Nunes has reportedly crafted. Uh, the House rules contemplate that the President would then get five days to determine whether uh, he has any cause to object to its public release. Uh, has the, what's, what's the current thinking? What's the current level of White House involvement in this decision? Can you shed any light on the process between this White House and Capitol Hill with this question? Uh, look, no one at the White House has actually seen the memo, so it would be hard for us to make a decision uh, to, or to speak about it before that would take place. Right now, we're letting the House process play out, 
and if and when it's time for the White House to weigh in, uh, we'll do that through the proper protocol, making sure we follow legal process. Uh, but again, we're not to that point at this in the process yet. Margaret. Sarah, two questions. Well, just following up on that, is the White House, I know you said you have to wait and see, but is the White House open to the idea of a release of this memo uh, to the public? And can you say in the State of the Union address whether the President will mention at all this ongoing Russia probe, which you said, you know, is really uh, Russia fever that the country needs to get out of its system. Will he address it in any way? Uh, to answer your first question, uh, we want full transparency to what we've said all along, and we'll make a decision uh, when and if that time becomes necessary. In terms of the State of the Union, uh, I'm not going to get ahead of the President's address. It's tomorrow night. I know you are all uh, excited and will eagerly tune in and can see at that time exactly what is going to be included. But he April. Feel need to address it. I think we've addressed it every single day that we've been here. It's one of the questions you guys ask over and over and over again. In fact, we spend more time on that than we do any other topic, despite the fact that time and time again, poll after poll, says that, frankly, no one cares about this issue, and it's certainly not the thing that keeps people up at night. We'd love to talk about all of the things that do, and my guess is that will be the focus of the President's state of John. Thank you, Sarah. The former Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, described Andrew McCabe as a dedicated public servant who has served this country well. Would the President, would you describe him in that same manner? Uh, look, I don't have a personal relationship with him, so I'm not going to describe him. I think we've talked about some of the concerns that we have uh, with some of the actions that he's taken. But in terms of anything specific regarding the deputy director, particularly the news reports of today, I would refer you to the FBI. Francesca? The President, based upon uh, past tweets that he's put out regarding uh, Mr. McCabe does not seem to be a big fan of Mr. McCabe. Is he disappointed that he's leaving his post as the deputy FBI director? I, I haven't asked him if he was disappointed. I can tell you he didn't play a role in any of that process and, again, would refer you to the FBI for any specifics. Francesca? Thank you, Sarah. In one of the president's tweets in December, though, he did say that Andrew McCabe is, quote, racing the clock to retire with full benefits 90 days to go. So does the president believe that Andrew McCabe should be allowed to retire with full benefits? Again, I would refer you to the FBI for any specifics around the news of today of his stepping down. I have a question about the State of the Union. You mentioned uh, who was going to be in the First Lady's box at the State of the Union. You talked about a lot of the different guests, but I didn't hear anything about the president's family. Can you say which of the president's family members will be there? And can you also potentially preview for some of the travel that the president might take? Usually the president takes travel to push his agenda afterwards. Uh, in terms of family, all of the president's uh, children, along with the first lady, uh, will be at the State of the Union with the exclusion of Barron. I don't believe he will be attending as of right now. Uh, and in terms of travel, we will keep you posted on any scheduling announcements that we have uh, over the week. Margaret. Thanks, Dr. I want to ask you a question about uh, the 5G network, but also uh, before I do that, uh, Treasury is set, I believe the deadline is today, to release to Russia over the new reports of Congress. Uh, can you tell us whether that's actually going to happen today and whether the names on the oligarchs list will be public um, and uh, on the impact on sanctioning Portions of that be public also. Uh, we do expect the reports today, and I would refer you to the Department of Treasury uh, for any specifics on that as that waiting. happens. So if that's something you guys can coordinate, that would be really helpful. Um, on 5G... We're um, coordinating, and I'm telling you that they're taking the lead, and for questions specific to it, you should I'll, reach out I'll to the Department again. of Treasury in terms of timing. I'll let them know that you said they can tell us. Um, on, uh, <laughs> on 5G... Um, I know there's a lot of speculation about what might happen and, and whether there is a security case to make for one secure network, um, but some experts, including the Republican FCC chair, I guess, are a little concerned about the idea of one nationalized network. Can you bring us up to speed on whether that idea is dead or very much still alive, where that stands? Uh, look, as we outlined in our national security strategy, I believe it was actually on page 19, 
a uh, few people will be proud of me for memorizing that. Uh, we discussed the need for a secure network. Uh, right now we're in the very earliest stages of the conversation. There are absolutely no decisions made on what that would look like, uh, what role anyone would play in it, uh, simply the need for a secure network. And that is uh, the only part of this conversation that we're up to right now. Just one network or multiple possible, possible uh, Look, there are a lot of things on the table. Again, these are the very earliest stages of the discussion period, and there's been absolutely no decision made other than the fact the need for a secure network. Dave. Thanks, Sarah. Tomorrow night, will the president talk about an urban revitalization plan? Uh, as I said before, I'm not going to get into the details uh, beyond what was already discussed last week on the State of the Union, but I do think it's uh, something worth tuning into.